Welcome to Church Unleashed, a Lutheran ministry that wants you to know that you are unconditionally loved by God. We know that faith can often seem like a wrestling match, life overwhelming and hope hard to find. Worship gives us a chance to pray, hear sacred stories, rest in love, and be turned outward to prepare for the week ahead. So join us every week, either on TV or online. Take a deep breath as we begin worship together. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Church Unleashed. I'm Pastor Jeremiah. That makes me Pastor Steve, and Pastor Roger's going to be with us in just a few moments. We are glad you are here for worship. We are glad to be back in Amen. worship here at St. Paul's, but we're also going to be uh, in another special place today in Glen Falls uh, in Williamsville. We're going to be outdoors a little bit. Why are we going outdoors today? This whole month, we're talking about living water. And so we thought, what better place to go than to be surrounded by water that is moving, that is filled with life, that is sustaining life, as we remember God's gift of our life-giving waters of baptism. Absolutely. So all month, we're going to focus on that in this time of worship. There's a lot of special things going back. Some kids are going to school for the right. first time, like your daughter heading off to school. And uh, the bills are starting up, the Lucky Bill socks. Can't forget that. Not, it's early this year because it's Labor Day weekend, and hopefully you have had a great three-day weekend and a wonderful summer. But we're glad to be back in worship. So let's center our, our hearts and our minds now uh, to take some time of confession and hear about God's love and grace for us. We worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of mercy and forgiveness, we, we confess, confess that sin still has a hold on us. We, we have harmed your good creation. creation. We, we have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, through the living waters of baptism, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, so follow him now and walk in God's abiding love. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, boys and girls. This is the best part of the service. It's the children's time. Glad you are here. And you want to know what? This is also one of the best times of the year because for maybe you and definitely me, we are excited about the startup of school. No, not school. Buffalo Bills are starting to play this week. It's coming up. It's going to be exciting. We're going to win every game this season, go on to the Super Bowl. This is our year because we have chosen the best team possible. Yeah, I'm wearing this jersey. However, I'm not actually on the team. If you watch on Thursday night or Sundays, you're not going to actually see me on the team. But you might see me wearing this up in the stands going rah, rah, team, let's go Bills, something like that. Or maybe at a Sabres game, I know I'd have a Sabres sweater on to be doing the same thing, but I'll say rah, rah, Sabres. And I'm, I'm rooting for my team because I love all these incredible people that have been chosen to be on this team. They are uh, faster than me. They're taller than me. They're smarter than me. They're, they're just incredible athletes and they're gonna do incredible things. Have you ever been chosen for a team? Well, maybe you've played sports along the way or you had one of those awkward moments where captains were picking up teams. I don't think they do that anymore. Uh, or you've uh, played Little League or house soccer or something like that. And you have teammates and, and you have a role on that team and you're important and you're needed and, and you do something that's spectacular. I hope you have that chance and that experience of your life. But maybe you haven't, maybe you're not into sports, does that mean you're not on a team? Well, actually, all of you are on a team. You are on Jesus' team. You are on God's team. Every one of you that's been baptized and had these living waters poured out over you, you are right then and there called, elected, and ordained to be on God's team. You are chosen to be part of God's team. In the Spark Bible, towards the end, uh, it's on page 496. It's about the Great Commission. And in Matthew's Gospel that we're going to read the whole thing in just a minute, Matthew, the very last thing he says to all the people is to go, to preach, to teach, and to baptize. Yeah, to put that water over other people so that they will know they are part of God's team. They are part of a very special group of people. And they actually don't have to be faster or smarter or more athletic. They're just loved by God and you're loved by God, and I am too. I am thankfully on that team, and I hope that you're on that team as well, or maybe you want to invite some people that you know to be on that team as well. Pastor Roger will talk to us about that in just a few minutes. So I hope that you remember today, no matter what happens with the Bills, even though I hope we win all the games, we're all winners because God has chosen us to be on this team and to go out and to love the world, show grace in the world, to show compassion in the world, and you and I can do that, whether it's at school, or at home, or with our family, or maybe even at a Bills game. We are part of God's team. So pray with me. I'll uh, say a couple words, you repeat at home, and then we'll keep going like that. Dear God, thank you so much for choosing us to be on this team. Remind us of our baptism, and remind us how much you love us, so that we can go into the world and love everyone around us. And all God's children said, Amen. Have a great week and go Bills. Gentlemen and friends, joining us, this is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. This is the very end of the Gospel. Jesus has uh, gone through this resurrection, amazing thing that's happened on our Easter morning. Uh, people have tried to conspire against the word getting out there because they don't want folks to know what has happened. And then this happens. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Friends, this is the good news. It's the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. It's so good to be with both of you yes. back again yes. after Welcome a back. wonderful All summer. Right. All right. All right. And here we are again outside in God's beautiful creation. We're in Glen Park, Glen Falls Park. Got right it. Glen Falls right Park in Williamsville. Park in Williamsville. Yep. And we are surrounded 
by water. We've got a waterfall in the distance. We've got a little brook I think going it's an island. around us. Yeah, we're on an, almost like yeah. it on an island. Yeah. And all month, we are talking about living water. And so if we're talking about living water, immediately my mind goes to... Baptism. Baptism. Yep. Thank you, all thank right. you. So I thought I'd start off this morning with a little pop quiz. You can play along at home. Let's see if okay. we can stump the pastors. Oh, you're going to ask us questions? Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, all right, cut. No, just kidding. Okay. Gentlemen, <laughs> here we go. How many sacraments in the Lutheran Church? Two. 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 They are? Communion. And nice. baptism. There we go. What makes something a sacrament in the Lutheran Church? A lot of our friends, they might be uh, uh, Catholic or former Catholics at home. They might be used to a lot more. Yeah. So what, what, how do we decide to only get two? I always think of it as these are things that Jesus told us to do. Yep. These are action commands that Jesus gives us. Go and baptize and take bread and wine. And so, so the bread and wine, there's got to be some physical thing about oh, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Nice, of it. right? We heard and the command in the scripture reading. That yep. physical thing also has the, the spirit and the word connected with it. So yep. there's a promise involved, yep. right? I'll be with you. Right. Yeah. That's why coffee is not a sacrament. It, oh, correct. It's got most of I the thought it was the third. It, but there is no a, real problem. Yeah. Just two. Yeah. Just two. Yeah. Well, they did pretty well. Uh, it's almost like you went to seminary. We're so excited to be talking about living water, about baptism, about the promise of forgiveness and new life given to each of us. And what I want everyone to know is that it is indeed a gift. And that's why in the Lutheran Church we'll baptize any age, but even babies, because it's not about them having knowledge or one day saying, I accept God into my heart, but it's about what God through Christ has done for us. And so. Whenever there's a baptism at Parkside, we don't have a children's sermon that Sunday, not just so that I get a Sunday off from thinking of something creative, but so that we can gather the kids around. And I tell them to watch and see if they catch the moment when love happens. So we play a little game of I Spy, and can you see when love happens? And when that water hits the child's head, we know it is affirmed, it is proclaimed God's love, God's forgiveness for that child and, and for us all. Yeah. And, and living waters, what's great about that, that idea is that they're alive. It's Amen. not stagnant water. There is some stagnant water over here, but even as the ducks are moving, yep. they're moving the water a little bit. It is alive and it's changing and it's moving with us and it's pouring over us like the falls. And sometimes in the church, we think like, well, we, this is the way we have to do things. You always get mm-hmm. baptized as a tiny little infant, right? Like I was three, I was three weeks. Do you guys remember? How old you were? Three months. You? Three months. Oh, I was months too. You were months. All Don't right. remember. So I was just three weeks. I had no idea what was happening. And a lot of times in church, when we see them in church, it's usually a little baby. Just a few weeks ago in church, I had the just incredible Sunday to be able to have a mom be baptized wow. in her awesome. late twenties, and then bring her child and have the child baptized. Sometimes the order of God's living waters changes, and we got to remember it's God doing the work. God pouring out over us. Another time with sacraments, I had somebody, you know, a lot of times in church we say, you gotta be baptized and then you can take communion. Well, turned out one Sunday we had somebody that was part of one of our recovery groups and his daughter came up and came to church one time with him. They came up to communion. And I didn't, I didn't ask them like, hey, have you been baptized? You, are you got all the things in order? And they gathered around the altar and we had communion together Amen. and God's promise poured out over them. And she said to me after church, hey, Pastor Steve, I think I need to be baptized. Well, so yeah. the living waters are moving and turning and in our own lives today, it might seem like, oh, well, I, God's supposed to be doing this, but sometimes God's a little tricky and okay. can move those waters around us in new and amazing ways. Your baptism can be something that is constantly uh, changing and reminding you of God being before you, in front of you, behind you. We say that in the benediction, yeah. right? It's the reminder that God is in all places through those living waters in your life. Yeah, the promise is constant. I, I thought of a story about communion. There oftentimes we'll have kids come up with their families for communion and I'm one of those pastors that if I see even a little kid doing this with their hands open, you get the bread too. Amen. You get the body of Christ too because who could say no to that? God doesn't say no to us ever. Yeah. God's love never says no. It's always around us. It's a promise, and it's one of those promises that never goes away, and like you were saying, that living water, that promise is always with us and around us. I think that's what makes us uh, a family, a much bigger family than we could ever imagine. It's, it's that 
that promise in baptism that connects us as children of God to, to all creation. Like water molecules are connected to each other in a, in a way that makes them flow. We're connected to one another through God's love. I love thinking about how big this family is and who belongs to this family. Just like that little kid with their hands open doesn't get refused to receive the body and blood of Christ. We don't refuse anyone who wants to be baptized, who wants to join this family. And it does not matter what you look like or how much money you have. Uh, like we were saying, I didn't have any money when I was a few months old when I was baptized. Like there are no rules about who is welcome in this family. I think one of the things that, that I want to say, we want to say this morning to anybody out there, if you are not baptized, if you have not had that promise spoken over you and, and felt that, that water poured over your head, if you haven't been brought into this great family much bigger than you are or I am or any of us are, we want to offer that gift to you. Get in touch with us. We will baptize you and bring you, bring you into that fold and into that promise of love. That's our invitation to you as a member of this, this church, yeah. this, this, this wacky wild church that's being beamed out into homes rather than gathering in a building this morning. Doesn't mean that those sacraments are any less real for you. So if you want to be baptized, even this morning, you're finding it in your heart, you're saying, you know what, I want to be a part of this family. Get in touch with us and we'll come to you and we'll baptize you wherever you are. That would be a gift for us, Amen. I think, Amen. definitely. And I huh. certainly hope that all folks, whether your baptism was a month ago, a hundred years ago, that yeah. they would know it is a new each day and that each of us might live in that promise, in that gift, in those living waters Amen. this day and always.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now I invite you to join me as we pray together for the church, for the world, and for all those in need. God, we pray for your church, for this great family that you have brought together into the promise of your love. We need your help to live out that love in our own lives. So stir up your spirit in our hearts and remind us that because of your promise, we can also share that love with all those around us. Lord, we pray for this world in all of the, the broken places, in the war-torn places. We pray today for the people of Ukraine. We pray that they would receive help and peace and that you would stir up your spirit in the hearts and minds of world leaders to calm them down, to make them less ambitious and violent and turn us all into people of love and your promise. Lord, we pray for this world and all the places where water is not safe or clean to drink. Help all your human children make better decisions about how we use these precious resources that you have given to us that we need for life. That by taking care of the water and the air, we might remember that we're just taking care of ourselves and we're taking care of the rest of our human family. Lord, we, we pray today for all those who work, all those who labor, to bring all sorts of things into this world, to change the world for the better. We pray that wherever people are working, that they would be treated fairly and justly. We pray that anywhere anyone is sick, you would send healing and hope. And Lord, finally, we give you thanks for that great family of ancestors, all those people who have gone before us, who have taught us about the promise of your love, all those who baptized us. We thank you for their gift and their witness to your love, and we ask now that you hear us all as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So thanks for leading us in prayer, Pastor Roger. This is uh, just an amazing time to have this opportunity for worship. We are so glad you're here. And it's the end of the service, so you know what that means. It's mail, mail time. time. That's my favorite part. We have been getting uh, letters over the summer from you, and it's so great. We appreciate when you write to us with the, the regular mail. But we got a special one when we were recording our services this week as we put some pictures up on Facebook, as we often do. Uh, Tom uh, sent us a quick message and thanked us for doing the service, told us he watches it religiously. Do you get that? That's a church joke there. And he said, uh, we said, how'd you find us? And he said he was channel surfing at one point and then COVID pretty much brought it home and it became a ritual for him. So Tom, uh, down in uh, Angola, thanks for watching and being with us. If you were just channel surfing today, we are glad that you are Amen. with us. We're going to put some things on the screen of how you can reach out to us, connect with us. We thank you for those of you who are uh, continuing to send offerings and gifts. Uh, just thank you for blessing this ministry through the things that you are sharing today.
And now the blessing. Well, before the blessing, though, guess what this is? This is just a few days away oh, from that's a very, right. we need a very special day this coming Saturday at Lake Chautauqua Lutheran Center. Our own uh, videographer and producer, Nick Strakowski, will finally marry uh, the, the woman of his life, the bride, uh, Katie Braystead, and we're just thrilled for them. Uh, we have the opportunity to be there this Saturday, so please keep Nick and Katie in prayer. We'll put a picture up next week and show you how great it was. So pray for them on Saturday, mainly for Katie. All right, friends, as you go on your way today, may the Lord go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to be your friend, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. So go today celebrating and rejoicing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. May you be unleashed to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. again. 